Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Deathbot from Third Shoe Academy. Okay, first of all, question one. The question asks you to find the sum, right, in this expression. So it's 1 squared times 3 plus 2 squared times 4 plus 3 squared times 5 dot 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 all the way until 20 squared multiplied by 22. Okay, so how to solve this telescopic sum? Okay, let's try together. So first, obviously I need to know what is the pattern of each term. Okay, so there are 20 terms here. Notice that there's something square multiplied by the second number, which is twice, which is two more than the first number. All right. So here I can write as a general term. So the general term is basically n square multiplied by n plus two. All right. So here the first term is when n is equal to one. This is when n is equal to 2. This is when n is equal to 3. All the way until this is when n is equal to 20. Okay, so I need to write this. Okay, so here basically it will just be equal to n cubed plus 2 n squared. Okay, so meaning that the sum basically can be written as in a summation form, right? n is running from 1 all the way until. Okay, of n cubed plus 2 n square. Summation, alright, I can break it into summation of n from 1 all the way until 20 of n cubed plus, I break it, n2 being constant, meaning it doesn't depend on n. I can take it out as multiply sigma and running from 1 all the way until 20 of n square. Okay. So this term basically means it's the summation of consecutive cube from 1 all the way until 20. Right? Probably I will tell you the formula. Some of you may already know. So 1 cube plus 2 cube all the way until n cube. That would be just be n multiplied by n plus 1 over 2, the whole thing square. You will need this later on. 1 square plus 2 square. So this is sum of consecutive square. Okay, this will be equal to n multiplied by n plus one multiplied by two n plus one over six. Okay, so using this, so here will equal to n n plus one. Your n now is sum all the way until twenty, right? So it's twenty multiplied by twenty one over two, the whole thing square plus. 2 multiplied by the summation of the consecutive square from 1 all the way until 20. Okay, so n is equal to 20, meaning that 20 multiplied by n plus 1, so that is 21, 2n plus 1, that would be 41, divided by 6. Okay, and all of this you can simplify it. At the end of the day, you will get 49,000. 840. So this is the final answer for this sum. Next, question 2. The question says, let a1, a2, so on and so forth, and b1, b2, dot dot dot, be two arithmetic progressions. All right, so arithmetic progression meaning a sequence that has constant difference such that a1 the first term is 10 b1 the first term of the second sequence is 24 and that a100 plus b100 is 2014 the question asks what is the sum of the first 20 terms of this sequence so this is the first term right a1 plus b1 is a new sequence okay and a2 plus b2 is the second term of this new sequence. This is the third term of the new sequence. So plus, the question asks for the sum of all of these 20 terms. Okay. Okay. Let's try. 
we are given that a and b are both arithmetic progression. So that means that a n can be written as a1 plus n minus 1 multiplied by c, whereby c is the common difference of the first sequence. Similarly, bn can be written as b1, the first term, plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, whereby d is a common difference of the second term. If I add these two together, it, I would get a n plus b n, a1 plus b1, put it in a bracket. For the second term, I would take n plus 1 as a factor. It will leave me with c plus d. Okay, so here I can put as a bracket. So what do you notice here? That means that the sequence a n plus b n, okay, this sequence, right, this is the nth term, this is the first term, it's equal to n minus 1 multiplied by some constant. So it says that this is a an arithmetic sequence as well, right? Arithmetic sequence with the common difference as c plus d, all right? Because the nth term is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. Okay, so now we already established that a n plus b n is also an arithmetic sequence. The question asks us to find the sum of the first 20 terms of that sequence. So it just, so first thing first, I need to find what is the common difference here. Okay, so all I know is this and the first two terms the first term of these two sequence. So if I substitute it in, all right, so 100, so that means that A100 plus B100 is equal to A1 plus B1, okay, plus 99, all right, multiplied by C plus D. A100, A100 plus B100, we know, from the question is given as 2014. So let me erase that. Substitute as 2014. A1 I know is 10, so substitute it with 10. And B1 is 24. Substitute it with 24. From here, it's not hard to see that C plus D will be equal to 20. So the common difference of the last sequence basically is 20. And we know the first term, right? Basically, the first term would be 34. So, to find the sum, hence, the sum of the first 20 terms of the sequence in a question, all right, it would be number of terms divided by 2 multiplied by the first term, which is 34, let's like say, right? A1 plus B1, which is 10 and 24, respectively, plus the last term, or the 20th term. The 20th term can be found by first term plus 19, multiplied by the common difference, which is C plus D. And we just found that that is a 20, all right? So here, after some simplification, you should get 4,480 and that would be the final answer. Next, question 3. The question says the set A is a non-empty subset of this set, which is the universal set of 1, 2, 3, all the way until 9. Okay, so A is a non-empty subset of this with the property that whenever A element, let's say it's a, a small a, belongs to a, then 10 minus a also belongs to a. Okay, so with this condition, the question asks how many possible subsets a are there. Okay, so the condition says that if an element is inside a, 
10 minus that element is also inside A. Right? So example, if 2 inside A, that means 8 is also inside A. So how many possible subsets are there? Okay, let's try. So to start off, I would partition the, the large set, the universal set. So partition this set into five subsets. So B1 is basically just uh, five. You will notice the reason why I break it into this kind. Okay, and B2 is a set of 1 and 9, B3 is a set of 2 and 8, B4 is a set of 3 and 7, and B5 is a set of 4 and 6. Okay, why do I do such thing? Okay, notice that if an element is inside A, 10 minus the element is also in A. So that means that elements of A must come from the entire come from the entire set of of elements of B R. Right, whereby r is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what it means here is that, okay, if I pick 1, right, I for sure need to put 9 as well inside that subset A. If I pick 3, let's say, I for sure need to put 7 as well. Right? Because based on the condition that if A is inside A, then 10 minus A is also inside that subset. Okay? And if I ignore both, if I ignore 2, meaning I need to ignore 8 as well. I do not include 8 as well. Okay. So basically, the answer, the number of subset of A, the number of subset A is basically the number of possible subset of this, basically, right? So you have five. So the number of subsets of a set has of five elements will be two to the power of five, right? Another way of saying is that either I pick this set to include in A or not. So that's two choices. Again, this set I can either put it inside set A or not. Right? Two choices. And then all the combination is two to the power of five. But that's not all because A needs to be non-empty. Okay, so meaning that I ignore the one case whereby I do not take everything here. Yeah? So that's one case out. The rest will be possible, right? So 32 minus 1, so the final answer will be 31. Okay, moving on. Question 4. Given that A is equal to log base 2 of 3, B is equal to negative log base 2 of 5, and C is equal to negative log base 2 of 3 plus log base 4 of 5. The question asks, what is the value of this expression? A square over 2A square plus BC plus the rest of the permutation. So B square over 2B square plus AC plus C square over 2C square plus AB. Okay. Some of you may already notice that. Okay, let's try. Some of you may already notice that if you look at the values of A, B, and C, right, you notice that A plus B plus C is equal to 0. Right? So starting from here, right, the sum is equal to 0. Let's say I try to, to write the first fraction into something. Okay, So here, meaning that uh, I should write as C. Yeah. So C can be written as negative A, negative B. Okay. So, like I said, the first fraction can be written as maybe in front. Okay. Can be written as 
a square over 2a square plus b instead of writing c i write negative a negative b okay and that equal to a square over open the bracket i will get negative a b minus b square let me write here next it is equal to a square the numerator notice that you can do factorization right so here can be written as a minus b multiplied by 2a plus b okay this you can be you can factorize it into this form and next a square a minus b don't forget okay a plus b plus c is zero so this 2a right meaning that i can write a plus a and plus b but this a plus b because a plus b plus c is zero so a plus b i can write it as negative c so here i would have a minus c okay let me erase this so that is the first fraction right so you can do the same thing right for the second fraction and you can do the same thing for the third fraction okay so put it together meaning that the sum would equal to this is the first fraction right the second fraction notice that b square is on top all right so that would still be b square over follow the pattern right so b minus a and b minus c okay and then plus c square over c minus a and c minus b all right so here let me write it here to save some space the common denominator i can take it as a minus b b minus c and c minus a okay so for the first fraction i already have a minus b i have a minus c that would be a negative of c minus a right and i need to multiply by b minus c so meaning that i need to multiply by negative b minus c okay for the second fraction i have b minus a so that is a negative okay and b minus c i already have so i need to multiply that by negative b square of c minus a of course the same thing here c minus a is here c minus b that is a negative of b minus c so i need another negative c square multiplied by a minus b okay notice that the numerator it can be written as a square if you put the negative in is c minus b again it would be a minus c it would be b minus a okay and the denominator should be the same next notice that the numerator in fact it can't be factorize into this form as well which is exactly the same as the denominator okay. so from here to here it can be factorized to to see this easily you just need to simplify this and to simplify this you can see it's exactly the same thing okay i will leave this up to you it should be very doable and then you start to cancel this out so notice that the final answer would be just be one because the numerator is the same as the denominator okay moving on question five let ai so the value of ai is either one or negative one all right for all i equal to one two three four all the way until 2014 okay. let me repeat so a1 can either be one or negative one a2 can be 1 or negative 1, a3 can be 1 or negative 1, so on and so forth, right? And M, capital M, is the summation of index I and 
j well, but i is smaller than j all right so it's ordered but i and j cannot be equal and it ranged from one all the way until 2014. so the summation over a i multiplied by a j okay? some of you may understand this summation but to clarify it this is in fact basically is equal to all right a1 what we call the cross term how the a2 plus a1 a3 so all the possible cross term all the way to a1 a 2014 but that's not all also plus a2 a3 a2 a4 all the way until a2 a 2014 all right and so on and so forth okay of course more no dot dot all right so what is the least value of this m remember you have the choice to choose a to be either plus or minus one okay so think about that all right okay let's try mm, let's say among a1 a2 all the way until a 2014 right some of them are negative one some of them are plus one right so let's say x of them are one and y of them are negative one okay in total we have 2014 terms so that means that x plus y should be 2014 right okay let's try if i sum all the a1 a2 all the way until a 2014 okay remember x of them is 1 and y of them is negative 1 right, so 1 plus 1 x term that would be x negative 1 negative 1 y term that would be negative y okay next thing i square on both sides so if i square on both sides okay notice that this will equal to the left hand side this will equal to um, a1 square plus a2 square all the way until a2014 square but we should also have a cross term right whereby the one can like multiply it by a2 and a2 also multiplied by a1 so you have you would have twice of such thing so technically it's twice of m if you understand correctly what is does m what does m represent okay so okay so this is the left hand side square right so meaning that this is x minus y square and that is equal to no matter what it is right a i let's say a i square no matter what a i is because a i will either be plus or minus one when you square it it will always be one okay so each of these will be one so one plus one 2014 time that would be 2014 and this is plus 2m okay remember the objective is we need to find the least value of m look at this right this expression first thing first notice uh, it must be an even number and this is a square of something okay so that means that it is an even number but also a perfect square okay and if i want it to be as small as possible then i need to find what is the next even perfect square after 2014 so it should be 46 square right so the next one would be okay, the smallest value of m is when 2014 plus 2m is equal to 46 square and that will give m to be 51 well just because m is equal to 51 doesn't mean that it satisfies all the value yet i still need to check okay so in the case whereby this m is equal to 51 let's see if it's actually attainable like what we say if m is 51 this is equal to 46 square right that means that uh, for x minus y let's say assuming x is more than y okay? that is equal to 46 
okay and of course you can have negative 46 as well so for the case of x minus y is equal to 46 and this right this or oh, negative 46 this will give the value of x y to be 1030984 or of course respectively uh, maybe let me write like this is clearer for this case it will just be a flip basically okay. 984 and 1030 so here is meaning it's attainable right so if it's attainable to get this value just in case you do not understand to get this value basically all i need to do is i solve this simultaneous equation okay so you will be able to find the value of x and y easily okay so it's attainable right x and y are still an integer okay so hence the least or the smallest possible value of m is 51 we have completed this lesson thank you for watching this video i hope you have enjoyed today's lesson goodbye and see you again in another lesson if you would like to learn more from these tutorials please smash that like and subscribe button